Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today we're gonna go back to the uh, 1975 set that I was showing on the last video, the 75 top set, which really represents the, uh, this year's top set, same design, same stuff. So this is the entire set. And I'm not gonna show the whole set. I showed the uh, Hall of Famers the last video. And again, these are the two big guys, the two big names in that in this set so i've shown that but what i would really want to show in this video is some of the different uh things that make this set different than the other sets or you know uh, subsets that are within this set so we're going to go ahead and uh and start showing you some of the subsets and the first subset is the um, highlights and the highlights it's a uh is right at the beginning of the uh, of the set. There's a uh, let's see here. It's it's really just six cards, and it shows the highlights for 1974, and then it talks about it in the back, like a uh, newspaper type article thing. See, so it says for this the card number one in the set, and it talks about Hank Aaron. So what are the other highlight cards in the set? Let's go over them right now. You have the first 1974. One of the highlights was that Brock steals 118 bases, and then again, it's got the story in the back. Another highlight of the 1974 season was Bob Gibson throws his 3,000 strikeout, and there's Bob Gibson throwing his, you know, with the 3,000 strikeout. Card number four is a highlight of Al Kaline hitting his 3,000 career hit, 3,000 hit club. There's Al Kaline getting his 3,000th hit. Another highlight, and one of the big cards in the set, is the uh, Nolan Ryan striking out 300 batters three years in a row. Now that's super impressive, 300 batters three years in a row. Norman Ryan with the Angels at that time. And there it is. And then the last highlight was um, Mike Marshall. And that he uh, hurls in 106 games, which is huge. So 106 games he pitched, both in relief and starting. So those are the highlights of the 74 season beginning with the Hank Aaron highlight. So what are some of the other uh, subsets that are in this? Well you have the uh, the leader cards. So we'll take a look at some of the leader cards. Who were the batting leaders in 1974? And the batting leaders in 1974 was Rod Carew and Ralph Garr. And you can see there that Rod Carew was number one, and then Mike Hargrove, and then uh, it was uh, Ralph Garr and Al Oliver, the batting leaders. Who were the home run leaders? Mike Schmidt and Dick Allen. Mike Schmidt and Dick Allen were the home run leader leaders in 1974. And we'll take a look at the back and we'll see who, uh, Reggie was second to Dick Allen. And you can see Johnny Bench was second to Mike Schmidt. The uh, RBI leaders, the RBI leaders, it's in 1974, and this is for the seven, representing the 75 card, are Jeff Burroughs and uh, Johnny Bench. Jeff Burroughs was a big star back in the day. And you can see he had 118 RBIs there and Sal Bando was second. And then here you have Johnny Bench leading the National League with Mike Schmidt being in second place. The stolen, stolen base leaders in 1974 were Bill North and Lou Brock. Of course, you saw the Lou Brock highlight that he stole 118 bases, and it shows you right there, Bill North had 54. And look at Lou Brock. Well, Rod Carew was second to Bill North, and Davey Lopes was second to Lou Brock, but Lou Brock had twice as many as anybody else. Then you had the uh, victory leaders that year, and you had uh, 
couple of Hall of Famers. You had uh, Jim Hunter, Catfish Hunter, and you had Fergie Jenkins, Andy Messersmith, and Phil Necro were the other two. And um, ERA leaders. ERA leaders were uh, Jim Catfish Hunter and Buzz Capra. And you can see the second was Gaylord Perry and Phil Necro. The strikeout leaders, who do you think? But the two big guys, Nolan Ryan and Steve Carlton were the strikeout leaders in 1974. And uh, we'll take a look and you can see Nolan Ryan had 367 strikeouts, way above Burt Blylevin and then Fergie Jenkins, and Carlton had a 240. So he would have been uh, third overall, and Andy Messersmith and then Tom Seaver had 200 also, 201. And then who were the leading uh, firemen? They called them the firemen back then, put out the fire, and those were the relievers. The top relievers were uh, Terry Forster and uh, Mark Mar Mike Marshall, who you saw earlier, who pitched in a lot of games, so it tells you here. They actually went by points. So that is the, uh, those are the leader cards for 1975. Now let's look at some of the other highlights here, which are the, uh, the World Series and uh, championships. So the American League championship were the, uh, the Orioles and the A's and the Athletics. And you can see there that the Orioles lost. There's Brooks Robinson sliding there. And the Orioles, the, the A's won three games to one. And you can see in the back, every game that uh, Baltimore won the first game and then lost the, the other three in a row. You can see Reggie Jackson and home run and stuff in there, so all the highlights. And in the National League, you had the Dodgers and the Pirates. And the Dodgers ended up uh, winning three games to one. And you can see that beautiful artwork with the dust lying up from second base. And here it tells you how it went. And it was the, uh, the Dodgers that won the first uh, one, two, two games, and then the Pirates won. And then it was uh, the Dodgers, 12 to one. And uh, this was 1974, so that was when Clemente was no longer there. So here's the uh, World Series game. So in the World Series, it was the uh, Oakland A's in Los Angeles, and in game one, the uh, A's won three to two. And you can see Reggie there, uh, hitting a big uh, home run here. So it tells you in the back. And uh, Oakland, let's see what happened there. I think Reggie had a, yeah, uh, I don't know, it didn't, didn't look like he had a home run, but. He had, he went one for three. So that's Reggie, game one. Game two was the uh, LA one, three to two. And you can see the celebration in the dugout there in game two. And then you got the stats on the back here of game, game two. See, Reggie went three for th three for three in that game, two for three. And uh, so game three came along, and then Oakland comes back. And there's Raleigh, Raleigh Fingers. So the uh, Oakland A's came back and won the game three to two, game three of the 1974 World Series. Game four, again, the A's won game four, five to two. That's a nice action shot there of the World Series game. And game five, the A's won the game again. So Oakland beat the Dodgers. I think that's uh, Ron Say over here, the Penguin, watching the, uh, the runner go, go by. So, and then we got back to the A's do it, and that's the celebration card and the A's win their third straight World Series. And you see Reggie over here 
celebrating. You got uh, you got Raleigh Fingers over there. I think that that's Raleigh Fingers. So that's the World Series and the uh, playoffs in 1974 as represented in the 1975 cards. The rest of the uh, we also have the um, the rookies. So let's take a look at the rookie cards that we have in this set. And of course, we have these, which uh, let me bring these back out. So we have these, which is the Keith Hernandez rookie. And you've got the Jim Rice rookie. You also have the Gary Carter rookie, which uh, I have in an eight, but I don't, it's in a PSA holder, so I don't have it with these with my SGC, it's in another box somewhere. So anyway, the, you've got the, uh, the rookie stars, and the big ones are the Gary Carter, the Jim Rice, and the Keith Hernandez. And as you saw, I do have the Keith Hernandez in an eight and in a nine. And I'm gonna go ahead and decide that from my last video, this nine is gonna be taken to the, uh, to the national. And I'm gonna sell this or trade this Keith Hernandez and the Keith the eight. So who are the other uh, rookies that are in this set? Well, we got uh, nobody big here. We got Vern Rule. You can see the rest of the guys in there. You've got this guy, Dennis Leonard, Tom Underwood. Uh, you got uh, Reggie Sanders in there, Manny Trio. Covered Doug DeSensei's. All pretty good players, no superstars there. You've got uh, Rick Roden again, Scott McGregor, and Jamie Easterly. Some of the rookies in this class. And here you've got a few other guys, Benny Ayala. Uh, so these are some players that just didn't pan out. Like most, time, most of the times, the uh, rookie guys do not pan out. You got John Denny here and uh, Raleigh Eastwick, a few other guys there that uh, really are not known pretty well, very well. And then this is the last of the rookies. Uh, and um, that is the, the rookie subset. So I've shown you the highlights subset, the World Series and the, uh, and the, uh, and the, and the uh, playoff subset, and then the leaders cards and the, the best subset in this entire 75 set are these. I love these, these cards here. And these are Dylan's favorite. These most valuable player series that was introduced here in the 75, uh, in, in the 75 cards. And what this shows you, it shows you the card of the uh, most valuable player for every year. And this was for 25 years of baseball. It was all the way up to 1975. And now with the new series that came out, they've created these all the way from 75 on. So that is so cool that they continued this. So we'll go ahead and show you every one of these. This is a 1952 most valuable players. You can see that um, Bobby Shantz, Hank Sauer, the 1953 MVPs, you got Roy Campanella and Al Rosen. You got the 1954 MVPs, which is Willie Mays, Yogi Berra. These are just beautiful cards, I love these. This is the 1955 Most Valuable Players, Roy Campanella and Yogi Berra. The 1956 MVPs, which you have the Mick, Mickey Mantle, Don Newcomb. And you have the 1957 Most Valuable Players. And that is the uh, Mickey Mantle and Hank Air. Again, from the same year, from 1957. So it shows the d design. Here's 58, and you see the beautiful design of the 1958. And the most valuable players were uh, Jackie Jensen for the American League and Ernie Banks. 1959, you've got uh, Nellie Fox, 
And again, you got Ernie Banks. So lots of Hall of Famers in this little Hall of Fame uh, Most Valuable Player set. 1960, you got Roger Maris and Dick Grote. That's a shout out to uh, Theo for Dick Grote. 1961, who else? But you gotta have Roger Maris again. And you got Frank Robinson, most valuable player in the National League. 1962, I love the 62 cards. And this is the one that card was, that was never produced. You do have the Mickey Mantle. National League, you have the Maury Wills. And again, that 62 card of Maury Wills in that picture was never produced. Maury Wills did not sign with Topps or would not sign with Topps. So his rookie card is actually a 63 Fleer. 1963, most valuable player, Elston Howard <clears throat> and Sandy Koufax. So another great uh, card uh, there, Sandy Koufax, one of his best years ever. 1964, you've got Brooks, the most valuable player in the American League that year was Brooks Robinson and Ken Boyer for the National League. 1965, you have Willie Mays and Zolio Versailles. Most valuable player for the American League. 1966, Frank Robinson and Roberto Clemente. 1967, you had Yaz, Carl Yastrzemski, and Orlando Cepeda as the most valuable players of that year. 1968, Denny McLean. Won 30 games that year, and you had Bob Gibson for the National League as the MVPs. 1969, you've got Carmen uh, Killebrew and uh, Willie McCovey for the National League Most Valuable Players. MVP, 1970, you got Boo Powell, and you've got Johnny Bench. It's a nice card of bench. I like the 70 cards, but uh, 71s are my favorite. And who do you have for 71? One of my favorites, that Vita Blue card. So most valuable player, 1971, was Vita Blue and Joe Torrey. Love that Vita Blue card, one of my favorites. I said that before, I'll say it again. It's 1972. We got uh, most valuable player was Richie Allen for the American League. And again, Johnny Bench for the uh, National League. This was Bench in his prime. 1973, you got Reggie with that terrible looking card, one of his worst cards, but he was the most valuable player. And you got Pete Rose in the National League. 1974, which was the last year for this card, these series was uh, Jeff Burrow and Steve Garvey. So, that ends in 1974, and then you had the 1975, which is now going to appear in the, uh, in the new 2024 Topps cards. So that's a quick preview of some of the uh, subsets from the 1975 set. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Have an awesome day.